Hi guys. Well, it is a snowy winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is 21 degrees here on Saturday afternoon. That would be January 14th, 2022. As I count down my days in the Arctic wasteland, I think the little dog has been buried in a snowdrift. We've been replaced by a cat. Uh, but anyway, so guys, I am just trying to decide. I, I haven't narrowed down to three uh, essays to read. Got one from Paul Kingsnorth that we haven't heard from in a while over from his website. And obviously from over here at uh, medium.com, trying to find someone we haven't heard from before. So we have a brand new voice that I have not heard from before, a fellow named Alex Haywood. Alex Haywood describes himself as a human being tired, a human being tired of being lied to. And his uh, essay for our contemplation today is titled, is titled, is titled, about climate change? Please. So guys, I obviously could not be, if I choked on hope through this article, we would never get through it. So somehow we're going to have to turn this four letter word back into one syllable. Hope about climate change? Please, I am so tired of being lied to. Okay, take it away, Alex. <clears throat> I love hope while I'm sipping my morning coffee just as much as the next person does, but I am tired of lies disguised as hope. Insidiously, hope now covers the surface of corporate media like oil leaking from a drilling platform. It is being peddled to suppress what is sure to be global panic in a couple of decades when the CO2 in the atmosphere reaches 500 parts per million and we finally admit we are on track for 3 degrees Celsius warming by the time my daughter is ready to retire. The deliberate and soothing hopism, hope, I call it uh, hopium, but hopism, the deliberate and soothing hopism of the last few decades that was created by Global Climate Change Alliance and other well-meaning actors hijacked by global finance and industry is what got us here in the first place. Let's be clear. The only way forward is with less but no one wants to make the sacrifices needed, apparently, so much for hope. It is clear that 8 billion humans, soon to reach 10 billion, cannot all survive at the level of consumption of the top 1 billion in America and Western Europe. For the human experience, for the human experiment to continue, we either have to make serious reductions in our expectations of what civilized living means and how many of us can afford to be civilized on Earth or find another planet. Of course, exponential growth being what it is, even that won't be enough for long. Let's start with the growth in our population. Huh. Beyond the vague statistical analysis 
of how education depresses birth rates in developing societies, no one is offering any substantial mechanism for the slowing down of population growth. The topic has been eerily absent from even the most heated debates about the causes of climate change and is only mentioned within the context of reproductive health and survival by the UN and never in the context of planetary health or the survival of our species. Centuries ago, we humans realized that culling to preserve the health of a herd vastly improved the life of the surviving population, but we are tragically blind to the fact that we are also earth creatures. We either stop reproducing uncontrollably, you know, says the proud father, or we will be called either by nature or by other men. We need to acknowledge that human exceptionalism, which claims that all we see is here for us to consume, dominate and destroy by multiplying fruitfully, will ultimately destroy us as well. Believing that we have been granted dominion over the planet, its flora, fauna, air, sea, and land is a delusion. It was started and perpetuated by a Bronze Age tribe on foot, which believed a psychotic, paranoid old guy in the sky has made it okay for humans to destroy everything we see because he got pissed off at a talking snake and at a woman who was hungry. <clears throat> From Texas Governor Abbott, so appropriately named, and his band of self-labeled pro-lifers to Turkey's Erdogan, the same people who are screaming about stopping the killing of babies are going to have to contend with killing millions of children. We are not entitled to claim life itself as a property right to monetize the commons and to take whatever we need and want. We have created an environment where we are not only willfully refusing to contemplate the consequences of the destruction of our ecosystem, we are actually blurring the lines of what it means to be human. <clears throat> the zealot champions of an antediluvian and doomed strategy of swapping the other by reproduction tragically and stubbornly miss the point that we are all the same. <clears throat> so guys, this, uh, actually this, uh, essay is, is a year old, <clears throat> so uh, that's why he's not talking about COP27 here. I can only imagine uh, if this essay were written a year later. <clears throat> the Halloween party that was the COP26 meeting in Glasgow gave us the tragic spectacle of hope masquerading in different disguises biomass burning, carbon capture use and sequestration, carbon offsets are no better than the cheap costumes you would buy at Party City and discard just as soon as the aspirin kicks in the next morning so you can have another drink. Each of those lies have their own problems of technology, cooperation and finance, and none are worse than the net zero promise by 2050, 60, or 70. Multiple choices! The delegates and the 500 lobbyists have gone home, have reported success to their masters, and have already started shopping 
for their next costumes. The reality knocking on our existential door is that one and a half degree Celsius, if it ever was a serious goal, is now dead. The planet will not be fooled into submission by replacing the phrase phasing out coal with phasing down coal and doesn't give a shit if the coal in question is unabated or not. And then he quotes uh, somebody named Lent. Quote, the harsh reality is that rather than heading toward net zero, global emissions just hit record numbers last year. Exxon, the largest shareholder owned oil company, proudly announced recently that it is doubling down on fossil fuel extraction and wherever you look, whether it's air travel, globalized shipping, or beef consumption, the juggernaut driving us to climate catastrophe continues to accelerate. To cap it off with, e with ecological destruction and global emissions already unsustainable, the world economy is expected to triple in size by 2060. And then he links you over to whatever uh, that was quoting from. After a dip due to corona panic, we are right back on track. Incremental fixes are utterly insufficient. They are designed to keep the same power and the same people in power once the calamity becomes undeniable and millions perish. They will then claim that they did everything they could, are almost at the point of success, and only they can save the remainder of humanity. Hope springs, hope spring is eternal, but maybe our stupidity is too. We have a carbon budget that allows us to reach the one and a half degree target with a 50% chance. But we would never board a plane if we only arrived safely in half the cases. Will you use Google Maps if you ended up in a ditch or drove off a cliff half of the time? Yet, that is exactly what they want you to do. 50% of 8 billion is 4 billion. Do you feel lucky, punk? Do you? The hope I have right now is that maybe if we are lucky, 4 billion of us can move above the 40th parallel, and maybe, just maybe, I and my loved ones will be among them. We need to treat growth not as a feature of our cherished economic system, but as the deadly, destructive bug that it, that it is. We are indoctrinated that free market capitalism, which of course is anything but free, allocates resources with an efficiency that no central planning body has been able to match, Sure, if the efficiency in question is the most efficient way to profit. Capitalism is great at this particular efficiency because it does not respect the sustainable thresholds of the natural systems it invades. It favors the near term over the long term, showing no concern for future generations. It ignores the indirect cost of producing those goods, the costs such as ecosystem destruction and displacement of native populations. It conveniently ignores the signals telling us that we're caught up in a Ponzi scheme and instead uses the trope of 
civilization on those who are skeptical of the advantages of unbridled consumption. It first denigrates them by labeling them uncivilized when they protest. Then it, it, then it imprisons or kills them if the protests get too popular. When the wrecked indigenous economies realize what is going on, they then make even more profit by selling their solutions to the very people they have impoverished or stage coups and install puppet governments. <clears throat> Overpopulation and overconsumption are two steps of a death waltz, and the oligarchs are in charge of the music. Our only hope is to stop dancing to their tune. Unfortunately, at the moment, stopping is not only considered heresy, but an outright betrayal of the powers that be. Just look at how the corporate media reports on the Great Resignation. It should be called the Great Stirring of Conscious and a yearning to break out of the yoke that will destroy this planet. The reality is that late-stage capitalism cannot give up growth. The reality is that democracy is being hijacked in the name of growth. <clears throat> the reality is that unchecked growth on a finite planet is just not possible. <clears throat> the reality is that this planet cannot sustain 8 billion people like an American, dress them like an American, eat, shelter, consume, pollute, use plastics, energy, water like an American, and fill hundreds of thousands of acres with trash like an American. Contrary to what Bush the Elder said at the Rio Earth Summit in 1992, the American way of life needs to be up for negotiation. Those who have hope are those who can afford to have hope. Most of us cannot. Hope, in that context, is just another luxury increasingly reserved for the rich. Hope, without action in this greater context, is immoral, but sadly, all too human. There you go. Amen. Brother Alex H. Hollywood. Hollywood. Haywood, I mean. So, uh... Oh, I don't know. I might come back, uh with please stop saving earth for your children's children. We'll see about that right now. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, find my little dog and dig him out of a snowbank. Yes, cat. I think you need to uh, let me up here. Yes. Excuse me. I would like to get up and turn the camera off. <laughs>